Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition. Today's guide and episode, I'm going to do a overview and review of Mark Waid's new Captain America Omnibus. And the big question, whether you should upgrade or not. As stated in a previous episode of Omni Bros, I'm the guy that kind of double dips, sometimes dips three times. And in this case, I've dipped into this story four different times. The original comic book, the Marvel premiere card covers, and the Epic Collection that came out just last year. And now this book. So, what's the difference, you ask? Well, let's find out what this book has in here. This is Mark Wade and Ron Garney's awesome run of Captain America. Let's look at the book itself real quick. It's got the Ron Garney artwork. Not sure why they decided to go with a white spine instead of a black one considering the all-black cover that they have in the front. Laying flat, I think the book has pretty good binding. You know, it doesn't have your old-school way of Marvel binding, but it's still pretty good. And the inside of the dust jacket. It's that Ron Garney artwork. So this book collects Captain America 444 to 454. And then Captain America Volume 2, 1 through 23. And also the Sentinel of Liberty miniseries, or maxi series rather, because it was 12 issues long. And the Captain America Iron Man Annual 98. A couple of other side stories. Most of the art done by Ron Garney. And some stuff done by Andy Kubert. So Mark Waite started his run on Captain America right on the tails of Mark Grunewald. Mark Grunewald had been writing the character for 10 years, and then Captain America had armor and was dying, and he kind of died maybe with Fighting Chance, that last storyline by Mark Grunewald. Mark Waite taking over this book was a breath of fresh air. It was so awesome to have this badass Captain America back in charge, and bringing back older characters too, like the Red Skull and Sharon Carter, characters we hadn't seen in a long time. And I kind of like his jaded Sharon Carter portrayal. Now, while I hold uh, Ed Brubaker's run as probably the best Captain America run, this is probably my second favorite. It's just such a great take on Steve Rogers. Like I said, he makes Steve Rogers a formidable foe for all these villains in this book. I love his take on Captain America. And the welcome back of all these other characters, too, from the past is awesome. It's been a few years since I last read these because the last time I read them was in the Marvel Premiere format. I'll show you a few pages of Ron Garney's artwork here. Really good sequential artist. One from the Kubert, Joe Kubert Art School graduate here. And his use of shadows is really good. I was, uh, I was a big fan of his art. It's what drew me into the series to begin with because I had given up on Captain America in the 90s. And then the series kind of ends abruptly because of Heroes Reborn. And of course, Heroes Reborn is when Image Titles decided to buy some of these Marvel characters. Rob Liefeld and Jeff Loeb took over Captain America. So that's where Captain America was for 12, actually 13 issues. That was right after Onslaught. So Onslaught was kind of the story that happens right after this 454, where the story kind of abruptly ends. So you're not really missing out on much other than he goes into another world in Heroes Reborn. Now, Heroes Return, he's back in the Marvel Universe, again under Mark Waid and Ron Garney. And this is the stories 1 through 22. I'm sorry, 23. It's got some Joe Kubert in there. And like I said, yeah, Andy Kubert. Some really good artwork. And as mentioned earlier, the 12 issue Sentinel of Liberty, which is kind of like a team up book. Oh, I love this storyline with Andy Kubert's artwork. It's such a great story. And let's see, these are the extras in the back pencil pages and layouts, scripts. Pretty cool little extras in the back. What's the difference between these books? Well, the size, of course. Just look at that. 
First we'll look at the Marvel Premiere hardcover. So here we have both books. The Marvel Premiere hardcovers, which are now discontinued series, has a little, I'm gonna say thicker, glossier paper, but smaller artwork. Not by much, but some. And then we have the Epic Collection. And again, the size comparison. Standard tray paperback size. And also the semi glossy paper isn't as nice. So the presentation is, of course, better in the omnibus format. Of course, that's the difference between a $100 book and a $40 book and the size. One thing I am disappointed in is that the Omnibus lacks three issues that was a crossover between Thor, Avengers, and Iron Man. Not that it's a big deal because First Signs wasn't like the greatest crossover, but the Epic Collection collected it. So what it is, it's a crossover between Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America and Avengers. It's just a four-part crossover. So let's, I'll show you what you get in the Omnibus and what the Epic included. So both the Epic and the new Omnibus collect at Captain America 449. However, when you get into the last few pages where it ends on a cliffhanger and it continues in Thor 496, you get a recap page and an advertisement to tell you to buy Avengers Iron Man first signed trade paperback. Which, I mean, it's three more issues. I'm not sure why they didn't go ahead and just plug it into this omnibus because in the Epic Collection, you actually get those issues. And as somebody that was upgrading his Epic, I guess I'm going to keep this one because it actually has the complete story. Like I said, not that it's the greatest story, but as I mentioned before, if I'm paying $100 for an omnibus, I kind of want the complete storyline. Other than that one little gripe, this book is awesome. Now, the big question is, should you upgrade if you already own the Epic or some of these Marvel Premiere hardcovers or the original trade paperbacks? And that answer really depends on you. For me, I'm the kind of person that likes his artwork in an oversized format, especially if it's artists that I really like, like Andy Kubert and Ron Gardney. So I just had to get this book. And the price point isn't that bad, considering it collects... Captain America 444 to 454, and then Captain America Volume 2, 1 through 23, the 12 issue, Sentinel of Liberty, and then a lot of the extras that we have in the back, some of the material from the Iron Man and Captain America Annual 98, and correction, the book is $125, but if you look online, there are places you can purchase this book for a lot cheaper than that. So yeah, ultimately it's up to you if you want to upgrade. I think it's a great book. Overall, I really like the presentation. The intro by Ralph Macchio, who was editor at the time that Mark Wade came onto the book. I thought that's really cool. I really like all these extras that we get in the back, including the script. Well, there you have it, guys. This was my quick review and a little bit of an overview and comparison of the Mark Wade and Ron Garney Captain America Omnibus. Uh, I mean, honestly, for $125, you're getting about 44 plus books and some of the best portrayal of Captain America ever. I think it's well worth it. So thank you very much for watching. If this is your first time watching this channel, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you would like to see more overviews, comparisons, and reviews, please let me know in the comments down below. And let me know if you decided to upgrade or am I the only idiot that upgrades these things. Again, this was Omar, and don't forget to tune into our channel every Thursday where we have a new episode where we talk about comic books, anime, video games, manga, and toys. So thank you very much, and have a great day.